um, I arrive at the festival and with my band The Make to play at Tea in the Park and um, pretty soon backstage um, her band comes along, Natalia's band comes along and starts pushing the car around that we're doing a little set in and um, we get out and we get handcuffed together. That's nice the kind of profit. jumping off point and from there we spend 24 hours handcuffed together trying to find ways to get out of them. We can't and uh, and they kind of... Discover their soulmates. Disco well, yeah, I mean, they sort of go on this, you know, this sort of journey of hating each other and then find that there's something there. It's absolutely, uh, like, I, I can't, I can't believe we did it. Like, I can't believe it's actually now there, you know, and four days and, and we just, we just did it. We just worked, didn't sleep much and just had it, you know. It's so different to normal filming where you're there waiting for hours for something to happen kind of drinking coffee and like eating biscuits and just like what's going to happen and then you do like a tiny bit and then the next day you do that tiny bit again and the lighting, none of that, just, just go, just act, just be in the moment, amazing. Yeah, we sort of had like three weeks here in this building um, kind of developing the script and, and working on the scenes and kind of trying, trying different bits out, trying to create two fictional bands in three weeks as well, <laughs> kind of in the evenings um, and then we sort of got up there and it was like being shot out of a gun or something and we just, you know, bang 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 and film sort of some days about 18 hour days or something like that I mean it was crazy and you know just the absolute just the absolutely most sort of yeah as you say just the most different experience to, to normal filmmaking ever really but it was I mean I think everyone went through the same thing you know from the sound department to the hair and makeup to, to David as a director you know we all had to sort of completely discover a new way of working and um, you know you'd get to a location you'd be filming some stuff backstage you'd have 10 minutes to do a scene you'd kind of do it and go on and and it was just it was just kind of like that the whole time the momentum and the sort of trust that we all I think had to put in each other to to kind of just go right let's let's hold hands and, and go for it and I remember for days afterwards I'd wake up at, in, at night and stuff like I'd still see a red light in the corner of my eye because I was you'd had a camera on you for that many days just constantly for that many hours that you were just convinced I would wake up at night thinking that David was in the room filming me. I'd be like, what is going on here? This is really weird. Um, so, yeah, it was very different to normal filmmaking. A lot of people thought we were just making a documentary. Do you know what I mean? Like, people with cameras who were getting, hey, mum! You know, and shouting and getting involved. And um, other people, uh, some, I think when Gavin was doing stuff, and obviously he was acting completely hammered, and there's a video, you know, there's a camera filming him. And, you know, people would stop and be like, can you leave that guy alone? Like... That's really rude to like f film some hammered per, you know, or we try and get the public involved because they'd be like, can someone help us get out of these handcuffs? And you know, people, there were these helpers that go around, I can't remember what they were called, they were like in blue, and they, like people really genuinely trying to help them, like, no, no, don't get us out of them, actually, please. Like, it's part of the film to not be able to get out of them. <laughs> so that's quite fun. It was great. I mean, you kind of, we tried to, you know, try to keep it as, as unin intrusive, you know, because obviously we were there on in their festival, you know, and everyone had gone and paid money to go to the festival so we didn't want to go around and try and like block off areas and you know we had to they they were our, our scenery you know and so we didn't want to infringe on it at all and you know it we learned pretty quickly that by going out into the the main arena um where there were eighty thousand people kind of having a great time and a great weekend you just had to sort of try and be as as undercover as you could really and um you know the moment you start trying to like set up a scene too much or stand around in one place for too long of course, people are going to be wanting to kind of come and say hello. Actually, I want to play the King Tut stage this year at Team the Park because I've done loads of festivals with my band Molotov Jukebox, who are playing at the party tonight. All oh, my band here, um, and we've done all the, the festivals in the south, like Glastonbury and Secret Garden and Green, Ma like just loads. But we've never got up here, and I want to play in the King Tut like tent. That was amazing, like because they, they also got loads of extras to shout and scream while I was playing with him, like handcuffs to do the mashup, and I was like, I want to do this for real. I really, really want this to happen to me next year, you know? It was fantastic. Well, it was amazing. I think we, yeah, we did the gigs on the Thursday night before everyone got there because yeah. we obviously needed this, the stages for like five hours to kind of go through each, you know, to go through the songs again and again from different angles and stuff. And, you know, I mean, I played in a band and stuff from when I was growing up and, you know, but, but stood on the enemy stage with the sun going down in the mountains. I mean, it's, it's kind of phenomenally beautiful. And I just came off afterwards going, like why? Why do I act again? Why, I'm not in the <laughs> yeah. band. Like I don't. Why do I? You know. Should we get on the main stage next year? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it.